Hello, this is Cooper from Telepathic Bunny Comics. I'm here with Piper's Adventure, uh, also known as Piper Steed, um, <laughs> who uh, has written uh, and edited a lot in Comicsgate. And the reason why we, we just jumped on right quick is because <laughs> we're getting kind of pressured here, but it, it is what it is. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> All right, man. Th thanks for the reprieve. Thanks for the reprieve. All right. No big deal. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, so there's a lot of, of uh, all adult, I mean, a lot of adult properties in CG. And uh, there's really not a lot of, I would call, uh, uh, all ages. And, uh, and so when you find an uh, all ages property in CG, you usually want to uh, kind of like, uh, pay attention because I think it's a lot easier to write just for adults. And that's why you see a lot of Marvel stuff written and it's supposed to be for kids. And it's like, this is adult stuff. Yeah. Because they don't, they it, writing for kids is like a balance you have to maintain and you find it's either way too fluffy, way too neutered and, and, like Teletubbies. I mean, Teletubbies just gave me the creeps, man. Oh my goodness! But I'm like, I'm like, this is gonna give, give kids nightmares. But it was like designed for like toddlers and stuff. And I'm like, there's gonna be toddlers that go wake up in the middle of the night. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> you know, as, as adults, they're gonna have like these nightmares, and they're not gonna know where it's coming from. It's like, why does it have a triangle on its head? I don't know. <laughs> <You> know? <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I mean, it's it, um. It's like, we're doing it live. Yeah, we're doing it live, Aaron. Yeah. <laughs> uh, designed for Satan. <laughs> right, 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 right. Uh, but the uh, thing about it is, though, is uh, I, I think it's interesting uh, when you see uh, stuff that's re like the stuff from my childhood, uh, especially you see like the cartoons from Saturday mornings and stuff like that. And I go back and watch this stuff and it holds up. Uh, it holds up very well for an, as yeah. an adult and for as it, as it did it for me as a kid and um and it's like oh so what did they what um secret did they know then that we've lost now do you do you have any theory about that well i know that for one it's probably easier for anybody to re uh, write stuff adult oriented because that's what we are um right. Right. And so it comes natural, like the story comes natural. You mm -hmm. you uh, run the risk of slipping in like your own language usage, for example. Right. Right. Or, um, but it's it's actually easier, I think, uh, mm -hmm. to get um, to write for all ages than it is to write for just children. Right. Right. Um, because there's a little less of a, a tug of war uh, in there. Mm -hmm. It's put yourself in the mindset of um, it, it, you're putting the responsibility kind of in the parent's hand and in the adult's right. hand to decide whether or not they want to hand that book to uh, their child of whatever their child's age is. Right, right. Um, they should, you know, you should hope that an adult's going to be entertained by it too. Yeah. And yeah. then leave it up to them as to whether or not, but make it, you know, as accessible as possible. Right. Um, without feeling like you're stifling your story itself. Right, right, right. Uh, stats has a good idea. I think it's uh, kids want the adult situations told in a way they can understand so they can feel older. Pretty simple formula. Don't insult their intelligence. Exactly. Right, 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 right. Well, uh, when I go back and I, I watch uh, some stuff that I enjoyed as a kid, you know, um, it, it wasn't like neutered. It wasn't like the edges weren't taken off of it. There was like some real, yeah. uh, there was some like real danger in some of this stuff, you know? Uh, yeah. And, it, you know, I, I mean, uh, there's like a, I remember watching the Transformers movie, you know, and, and, uh, and here we are, we got like dropped off to watch the Transformers movie and we all came out of it traumatized because it killed off Optimus Prime. And we're yep. all like, oh, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Optimus Prime, oh my God. You know, and I, I remember kids just like sitting there like the next day and they wouldn't even talk about it, you know, to each other. It's like, 
He's like, did you see a Transformers movie? Yeah, I saw a Transformers movie. Yeah, moving on. <laughs> 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 but uh, but think about it is though is when um I had like deaths later in my life, uh, like tra- traumatic stuff that happened to me later in my life. Uh, I felt I was more equipped to handle it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. it, it, it felt like uh, it wasn't like it was jarring. Yes. And, and things that kids shouldn't go through. But I, I just had like a frame of reference. I, I knew what death was. OK, I knew that that was a cessation of life. I won't be seeing them anymore. And yeah. uh, and that came from like reading stuff with with some of that in it, you know. Uh, Sean Davis, uh, Pillow Man and Blanket Boy. Uh, oh, yeah, uh, yeah. Welcome on. Welcome on. Of all the people to uh, talk to, you, you, you've been on my list. <laughs> uh, I, I honestly think for all ages, mm-hmm. uh, all you have to do for that yeah. is nip the, the overindulgence in stuff in the bud. So nip the gore. Right. right. Um, and, nip, you know, watch your language. Yeah. Uh, outside of that. Mm-hmm. Um, most stuff can be told in a way that parents, most parents yeah. will feel comfortable giving, you know, their kids, if their kids can read, then, right. Right. uh, they're very generally, it's easy to make parents or have something that parents would be comfortable having them. If you're writing specifically for children, yeah, that's, that's the big difference. You go at that in a completely different way. Right. Because first of all, you don't need to worry about entertaining the parents. No. So if no. you write for children, you're coming at the project not going, how can I entertain? But what mm-hmm. do I want this book to be for? Do I right. want to make an acute educational yeah. book? Do I want to teach like a life lesson? Do I just want to make little kids laugh? Like yeah. that's how you need to come at that uh, mm-hmm. when you're writing just for kids is what do purpose do I want this book to have? Right. Because it needs one. For them <laughs> yeah right right yeah um I, I think it's being intentional about the lessons you want to uh want to teach uh i think i think that's a good idea you know um uh, you see a lot of this stuff that's supposed to be for kids these days and it has it's so vapid i mean there's literally nothing that uh you teaching these kids like a, it's just bright uh, colors and sounds on a screen right Right. And, or and you got, I got things that have just been so nihilistic that they actually have no morals to it whatsoever. They're mm-hmm. basically teaching that that the world doesn't, nothing matters, you know. Uh, there's like a few of those. That's like right. That. That's great for teens. Teens would eat that up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. They, they want nihilism, you know, right? Uh, <laughs> hey, all you beautiful common skate salvages in the chat. Hey, Woo! Geek Avenger. What's up, dude? Uh, but yeah. Uh, I, I guess. Um, when I think of things like, uh, yeah, I read r- people like Roddenberry when I was a kid, you know, uh, read yeah. Twain, you know, I read people like that. And um, the sexual content was not there. The language yeah, I forgot was about not that there. One. Yeah, yeah, that's the other one you got to remove. Uh, I knew right. there was another one. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, there's like sexual content's not there. The the language is not there. And, uh, and the gratuitous violence is not in those books. Yeah. But... Any adult can read that and pass it on to their kid, and the kid can read it. And uh, because the adults not the, those those like the three big no nos, uh, you know, the, the adults like get triggered by. You know, I mean, there's and a lot of other don't stuff. Don't need though. those either to be entertained. That's honestly no, they don't. I don't it, need that. They don't. I feel like that stuff comes along when they're when yeah. it started coming along with the let's see how edgy we can get. And yeah. then it just became the kind of standard, like, right. this is meant for adults. Therefore, I need at least one of these three things. Do you think that's what killed the comic book industry? Is it's when, when they started putting edge in everything and uh, content and everything to where uh, the kids were no longer, like, within the, the ad- window of uh, people this was for? Yeah. Uh, honestly... The comic book industry right now, those books are for the people that wrote them and no one else. Oh, they right. They wrote those books right. for themselves and no yeah. one else. And that's, <laughs> right. they're learning that and laughing like out. It's like if you look it, at but... it, yeah, if you look at the narrowing of the audience started with that, it, it narrowed the audience uh, up into the teens 
away from the kids. And then they yeah. narrowed the audience up into the adults away from the teens. And then they narrowed the audience to just them and their friends. Yeah. It's, uh, exactly. it's like, and then they wonder why the comic book industry cannot hold itself up, uh, why it's collapsing in on itself. Because they narrowed the audience so much that basically the only people that are going to enjoy those comics anymore are people that are on the same in in these enclaves that they belong to you know right these very very niche <laughs> right very niche very yeah. very niche <laughs> you know uh oh spider man the, the spider chick can uh is carrying a wheelchair on her back and she's shooting w webs out of her crutches yeah who's it who's so this? freaking specific yeah, yeah it's like <laughs> <laughs> There's this like a the, handicap. This is for I mean, that person uh, specifically. I'm like, wheelchair bound. I want my Spider-Man wheelchair. Oh, okay. Well, that's nice. That you know, it's nice that they made the comic book specifically for like the uh, zero point one two percent of society that might be in a wheelchair. <laughs> yeah, they forget uh, that like uh -huh. unless they still try to make it appealing to everybody else. Right, it's not going to do well just because they narrowed it down to. It's great that yeah. you're including people, but if you're excluding right. literally everybody, everybody else, else. <laughs> to include that one percent, uh, right, right, you right. <laughs> you're kind of screwed. <laughs> <laughs> this is good. Uh, reading Richie Rich and Archie's as good as researcher creates comics up to a certain year, and then they completely destroyed uh, everything, all the content in Archie's. All the RT line just went completely woke uh, after a certain time. Uh, so m make sure you specify an earlier year. <laughs> oh, hold on. LOL, Spider Gimp. Sorry, I'm not PC. <laughs> Spider Gimp. Okay. Ooh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. But anyway, uh, well, uh, think about it this, though, is even when they did that, even when they, they, they like, quote unquote, did something in to include someone. They don't understand that the people in wheelchairs do not want to be pandered to. They do not want to be treated like somebody different. They do not want that exclusion. It's, yeah. And just singling uh, them out like that. Yeah. Just reminds everybody, hey, these people are uh, different. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it, so by trying to be inclusionary and exclude everybody but this group of people, you don't even please the group of people that you're trying to please because they don't want to be excluded from everybody else. <laughs> yeah. So it's a zero sum game. It winds up being a zero sum game. No, it, it winds up it's for nobody. Uh, anyway, stop at the nineties with Archie. I read other older runs when they were just kids. Yeah. Yeah. Archie's went woke. Definitely. 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 Uh, when they sexualize Archie and chasing Amy was the beginning of the end. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Hell, folks. Hell, wolf, mama. Hey, Hold you. Hey. <laughs> uh, well, uh, I see uh, Rift Riders. I see um, this, like, uh, it looks, it, it almost feels like this kid stole his mama's car and yeah. it picked up his friends, and now they're going to go on this adventure together. And uh, the, the, is that is that uh, kind of a decent summation of what happened? <laughs> uh, the char the characters would disagree, but I okay. think it's <laughs> yeah. Um, they're, yeah. They're on a joy ride. They're basically on a joy ride. It yeah, they're on like a permanent vacation joy ride kind of deal. And uh -huh. uh, right. yeah, uh, you'll learn mm -hmm. better details uh, assuming that we succeed. Uh, uh -huh. And there's more books. Then oh, you, the you books, will. You'll you will. get to learn more <laughs> of their, uh, more of their individual backstories will come into play on how they met. Right. Um, I just I like the. Um, it's not the only way to do it, but for some reason mm -hmm. I, I do kind of like the dropping people in the in the middle. We're gonna get, we're right. gonna put you right in the middle of the action. They just got done having some fun. They're yeah. planning their next fun event, play like, fun thing they're gonna do. Mm -hmm. And then they get thrown for, through for thrown for a loop, and so does the reader at the same time. Right. Well, it's like uh, it's considered one of the greatest uh, hours of television ever created. It's a Firefly episode where you Mao's like uh, in this dead ship. He's waking up in this dead. The, the ship is dead, and nobody's there, and you don't know how he got there. And uh, and he's like beating all the crap and you're trying to figure out what happened. And the whole thing is him basically 
trying to get the ship rebooted so everybody can come back on board. And, uh, and, but it's a really, com but dropping people in media radius like that. And you're like, so now you have like, you're worried about him. You're worried about the ship. You're worried about everybody else. And then you, you're just glued to the story to find out what happened. And, yeah. and then he go you know, and so, yeah, that's a definitely, it's a very powerful storytelling tool, uh, that, that not everybody like uses. Uh, as a matter of fact, there's a lot of storytelling things that have kind of gone by the wayside uh, that used to be commonplace, you know, uh, used to be, you know, the use of flashback is now become so clunky, you know? Yeah. It's been, and, it's been used so much too right. that it's become cliche. Yeah. Like that used to be the number one way I need to, I need the reader to know this information and I don't right. want to just write a paragraph. I need to show them yeah. uh, flashback. Um. Mm -hmm. But it's used so much because it's like the easiest go to. Right. That now you get, you, like, readers will start rolling their ears, like, oh, boy, it's a flashback. Oh, it's a flashback. Mm -hmm. Oh, great, cool. Um, <laughs> at the same time, I'm like, well, I mean, if you want to show something that happened in their past, uh -huh. that's still right. the easiest way to do that. But mm -hmm. uh, you have to kind of, um, reinvent the flashback almost in a yeah way. yeah like okay well you use a flashback but don't make it feel like oh flashback time again like mm -hmm. you're gonna have to make it like just yeah. as engaging as the current story and not feel like we're pausing a story right to to remember things well when when um i, I wrote a children's uh uh it's basically a sequel to harry potter and uh i i took his son uh uh, Albert Severus Potter, you know, and uh, <laughs> and uh, brought him into like a, basically got him his own uh, uh, like core group of people, and uh, one of them was Draco's kid, you know, uh, uh, I can't remember his name off the top of my head, but uh, and uh, Hermione's daughter because uh, they were like real friends when they were meeting the uh, train, and so I had them like in this trio, and this is a really great trio uh, of characters. And I kept getting this compliment. You write kids like kids, and uh, and and I, that that comment it, it's kind of like I was like, so I see this. Uh, it started making me look around, and I realized that that's not really a common thing now. That people don't write kids like kids. Yeah. That kids would respond. Kids would react. You know. Uh, I mean, you got like um, this Dakota Fanning. Basically made a career off of being a little tiny girl who recited long strings of facts that no girl, no little girl should, or, or the showed like a cognition that no little girl should have, you know, <laughs> and she was real good at it. But then you see interviews with her and she's like this little giggly girl. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But then in the, she'd be the, the self serious thing, you know, this uh, kid that's just like rattling off stuff and being the adult in the room, basically. Uh, that it's made a career off of that. Uh, <laughs> but, but, you know, when you write kids like kids are, you know, kids are obnoxious. Kids are short sighted. Uh, kids are, uh, are really, really selfish. <laughs> and kids yeah. and, and kids also are very emotional little beings because they don't have the, you know, the, uh, brain, uh, function, the, the, the frontal lobe, uh, you know, advancement enough to be able to keep their emotions out of their actions, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and so when you write kids, if you want to write them with some authenticity, you have to write them as a little shits basically. Yep. <laughs> yep. Uh, I mean, they can have moments where they, they have confidence moments where they, they, they like get beyond themselves or learn something, but mostly you got to write them as little shits. They, they, Essentially, got to be little obnoxious uh, shits, you know. I mean, that's because that's what kids are. That's what we all have were when we, you know, before we grew up, you know. And uh, remembering that it's a really, uh, it's a really delicate balance, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, especially if you need you need them to get from point A to point B in a plot, but you're like, right. but this is a kid, so yeah. a kid wouldn't think about this. How do I get the kid to? Right. To realize X, Y, and Z, they got to they got to figure it out. Yeah. Uh, 
Because right now they're busy spitting spitballs at each other in class. How do I? <laughs> How do I get them to like stop being little shits long enough to right? <laughs> right. You got to kind of lead them on the plot, and it's got to, it's a lot of uh, yeah. actions and consequences building up. You, right. You got to just give them like a big series of them mm -hmm. to get them where you need to go. <laughs> right. 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 Uh, hello all. Hell all. Belmont Press. Amen. Hey. Uh, Belmont, if you could mod for me, I'd appreciate it, man. Uh, Rift Riders and the other links are down there. I uh, we'll want to cover that in a little bit. Um, but you know, uh, one thing about that, um, is like if you read Huckleberry Finn, you know, Huck, yeah, uh, for the most part makes a lot of mistakes along the way, he does a lot of really stupid things along the way, and he pays consequences for them. Mm -hmm. But if uh, Mark Twain just showed how brilliant of a writer he was because, you know, he didn't make the right choice every time, but he, he was kind of like carried along by everything else, you know. And uh, but when he did make the choice, you know, the show the like made choices early on that were wrong. But as the as the book went on, he started making the right choices as it yeah. went on. And so any kid reading that is going to like say, Oh, okay. Well, he did. This was a bad choice and it caused these consequences. So I apply that to my life. If I do those things, they will cause bad consequences for me, you know? And so yeah. these, these choices he made later on, like he stood by Jim, uh, he, 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 uh, had integrity, you know, things like that, uh, things he didn't do later earlier on and, and things, things improved for him you know he had better consequences better outlets or better uh, outcomes and uh i think as you write children's fiction you really have to be mindful to teach those consequences or to teach the way the world really works uh because if you like Give some give a child a fiction that's basically lying to them about how the world works. You wind up with these green haired idiots on the internet <laughs> screaming into the void. That that's what happened to them. Nobody taught them how the world works, and so now they have these assumptions about the world that are not being backed up, and so they're yep. screaming in this frustration and, and cognitive dissonance, and and just like you know. And they don't understand why, why is this the way, why, why did that happen? You know, uh, how come before I left home, I got everything I wanted. And now uh, as soon as I hit adulthood, that's not, I can't just get what I want when I cry. What is this? And society is, what's really sad is society. Yeah. A lot of it is bending to letting right. them throw tantrums and giving them what they want for, for throwing tantrums. It's appalling right. to me that that's like mm -hmm. normal to them. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm like, I'm sorry, but as an adult, if I threw a freaking tantrum in front of anybody, <laughs> I can never show my face ever again. Like no. that's uh -huh. you, they, you guys should be embarrassed. What? Why aren't you? <laughs> like, <laughs> right, right. This is a good example. Uh, the Bridge of Terabithia is a perfect example of how to write kids. You believe that they could create an entire world and act the way that they do. Yeah, but it's uh, that's a tough read. <laughs> it's a tough read. Uh, there's a gut punch on that one. Uh, but think about it. This is that's good. That's good. It's good for kids. And uh, Rift Riders is kind of easy mode in the fact that all the characters mm -hmm. are um, right are technically adults, but one is trapped in a kid's body mm -hmm. and is the awkward thirteen-year-old's body. So he's got that to contend with. He's going to get treated like a kid right. fairly often. Right. It's a complex, all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. And then the other two are still young enough adults that they're still in that yeah. uh, goofing off phase. Right, right. So the one that looks the youngest is actually the oldest one? Yep. That is hilarious. That is that is real hilarious. I love that. Love that. Uh, Greek Adventure says I grew up with only first, second, and third place. Right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. You didn't win. You didn't win. You didn't win. You know, uh, kids who threw tantrums weren't disciplined for it, or now adults throw tantrums. But I came in mid. I came in mid sentence. <laughs> yes, but you yeah. are correct. 
You are correct. Yeah, You're absolutely. Yeah. You're absolutely correct. Um, so I remember when I was a, uh, um, I was very un, uh, uncoordinated as a kid. Very, very uncoordinated. Um, and yeah. uh, we we had these field days, you know, uh, about once or twice a year. And uh, it's basically, you know, you. Uh, the, the, I think they ended the ended field days because so many kids were being uh, upset by not winning. Uh, oh, geez. Of course. But anyway, <laughs> but at that time, you know, um, but I remember I decided there was this one thing I could win the, uh, you put, had to put an egg on a spoon and you had to get it across. Right. And I decided that was something that I could do that. I could do that. I could do that. Right. And I, and I practiced at it and practiced at it and practiced at it. Right. Uh, and I was just like, put it on the spoon and I was just like, walk it, you know, very carefully all the way to the end. And I, I, I just assumed that everybody else would like drop their egg or just lunge. Right. And, uh, <laughs> and so that was my, that was my theory. And I was like, I was determined I was going to win one ribbon. I'd never won a ribbon. I was going to win that one ribbon. Right. And I practiced and practiced and practiced. And so when it came, the day came, I carefully walked it all the way to the end, but the, Two kids were lunging and dropping it, lunging and dropping it, lunging and dropping it. Got there ahead of me, so I won a third place. But I was the only one to kept. I was the only one to kept the egg on the spoon the whole way. If that was the that was the rule, I would have won. But <laughs> nice. But I, I got uh, I got a third place ribbon. But it was like I earned that damn thing. <laughs> I was so proud of it. You know, third place. All right. I got yeah. a little fake gold uh, medal thingy for mm -hmm. for one. Um, yeah, because I had really, really, really bad childhood asthma. Uh, oh, I had okay. to breathe on a nebulizer before bed yeah. every night. Like I had mm. emergency inhaler. Um, and yeah, I wanted to. I wanted to win something. Mm -hmm. And uh, it wasn't a field day. It was like this walk a thon thingy. It oh. was weird. Had to walk oh. so many miles in yeah. so much mm -hmm. time. Right. Uh, which was counted by going around and around the track. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, I wanted that fake ass gold medal. <laughs> that cheesy fake gold medal. I wanted one. Right. And uh, I had um, so many left. And uh, mm -hmm. like there was an adult counting for each kid that would sit there and keep count of each kid. Right. Uh, right. And the one that was counting me, I would go by and at some point, like she started going, Hey, you, you can stop if you want, you know, you can, uh -huh. <laughs> you can stop. And I was like, no, I want this metal. Right. 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 Um, so I kept, I kept going. Mm -hmm. Um, and that changed to, you really need to stop. It's time to stop. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't have enough. I'm almost done. Like right. I have like, three laps to go or something like that mm -hmm. you know leave me alone yeah. i still got three laps um so then they pretty much they almost grabbed me basically <laughs> like, yeah. they they came and forced me to stop and was like mm -hmm. do you hear yourself you're like barely breathing the fact mm -hmm. that we're we're all way over here and we can hear <laughs> right right like, we can hear you wheezing right you look like you're about to turn blue it's mm -hmm. time to stop like and they're like yeah. this metal's not worth it <laughs> <laughs> but it was for you right it was for me man yeah. i was about to die yeah. for this crappy metal. <laughs> uh but they I, they didn't understand that that was that was like uh your rubicon that was your mountain on everest you were going to climb this damn thing you know yeah uh, like, you're going to no. achieve it you're going to achieve it That's... right i'm like all i have to do is walk around in circles in a certain amount of time come on let me finish all <laughs> <laughs> right right Right, exactly, exactly. Uh, anyway, um, let me see here. Uh, Blue, Blue Samurai says, got the stream marked for later. Got to go. Uh, oh. Thank you, man. Thank you, man. Drive safe. Uh, this one says, how dare them let you steal your thunder? I right? know, right? I know. Seriously, seriously. Uh, this is a good question. Uh, what's your strategy for marketing book for kids in the CG community? Well. Um, not titties. Not titties, no. Uh-uh. Um, it, it works for some. It's not. I'm not going to try it though. <laughs> it, it has worked uh, for some selling yes, kids books, yes, but I'm not, yes. yeah. Oh my, I'm not going to try it. I'm not going to uh, try no, it. No, 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 no. I don't think it'll work twice. 
Buy so. my book. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not making fun of like I respect the hustle like, for for real. Right. Right. Uh, the yeah. only thing mm. that rubs a little bit wrong is the fact that that one was a kids book. But right. Right. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. However, yeah. I also like agree with the well. It's not the kids buying the book. It's the it's the, it's the adults. Right. Yes, yeah, their parents right. buying them the the book. So, so you want to appeal to a pervy dad to buy a book for his kid? <laughs> hey, uh, this mm, one like again. Mm, yeah. uh, the strategy here, a lot yeah. of it is to stress that it is not a kids book. It's an all ages book. Right. Because there's a big difference. Um, yeah. And I don't think people think about, I think too many people think kids book when they think all ages book. Right. And, uh, right. It's yeah. like, no, it just means that it's a kid can read it and not, not see stuff that they should. Yeah. See. It's right. appropriate enough for anybody to enjoy. So I'm yeah. not writing down to people. I'm writing mm -hmm. a book that I would like reading as an adult. Right. Right. Um, but that I wouldn't mind handing to like any kid and saying, Hey, check this, check right. this comment. Right, 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 right. Ned this magazine around 12. Yeah. See, <laughs> yeah. Right. See, that's why the, uh, the big thing about an all ages book is uh, I am selling it to mm -hmm. the parents, but I'm selling it to the parents, not as a here, buy this for your kids. Right. It's a here, I think you'll get a kick out of this and your kids will too. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, right. share this with your kids. You don't have to buy it specifically. Now, you know, if, if you're not into comics, yeah. but your kids are, and you think mm -hmm. they would like it, then yeah, I'm marketing to your kids, but I'm still marketing right. technically to you. I'm marketing to the adults yeah. um, with a, I think the adults mm -hmm. are going to enjoy this book. Right. Right. Uh, I think Tug probably does that better. He's probably the top uh, all ages book. Uh, purveyor and cg or at least near cg adjacent to cg uh but that yeah, that uh, ask him, i need to ask him if, yeah has yeah. just mm -hmm. specific marketing tips for the age group that you know right. reminds people that it's appealing for everyone i think i think his edge mm -hmm. is that the book is starring him and his kids right Right, um, and and uh, it's also got that, has uh, his personality behind it. His like it's character. also got the Lovecraftian mythos, and you exactly, know. yeah. So that's a definitely an end. Uh, you know, you, he'd probably have you on. You and uh, you and Luke, he probably would uh, have you guys on. Uh, you think maybe? Yeah, yeah. Lola's in our group. Uh, she would. She would. It, at the very least, she'd have you on her show. Um, but oh yeah, uh, she's uh yeah she's extended offer. Uh, mm -hmm. We just have to coordinate uh, right. times. Right. Yeah, she she was offering Luke last night, but he he's like he'd been up all day, and he's like, oh, I can't do it, I can't do it. So, yeah, time. yeah, I seen that is later. Hard. This is hard. I feel bad because I actually told her that I would. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. She was like, after the the high uh, stream, uh, right. you want to come over to to my channel and yeah. talk about Rift Riders? I was like, hell yeah! Mm -hmm. I didn't know how. <laughs> Right. I didn't know how long the, the one stream was going to last. Uh, and yeah. I was exhausted by the end of it. And I'm like, <laughs> well, shoot, because I'm still getting over COVID. I'm like, I'm right, all right, talked out. Right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, yeah, uh, the uh, high stream, man, that lasted a while. I was like, how's, uh, how's that going to go? I, I was, wasn't entirely sure how that was going to go, you know, with Luke being a pastor and everything. <laughs> and being on the weed show. Fun. But Luke is a, um, like, Luke can put up with me. And yeah. he knows mm -hmm. I'm not religious. And so right, he knows right. the like stuff falls out in my mouth yeah. plenty. And then I'm like, you know, at the mm -hmm. very beginning, you know, I would just be me. And then I'd be like, oh, sorry, man. Right. Uh, no right. disrespect. <laughs> and he's like, I don't care. <laughs> that was funny. Because I used to try to like, yeah, watch <laughs> right, my mouth. Right. All yeah. Sorts well, oh, no. Luke, <laughs> Luke is Luke is definitely the cool guy. He definitely is. Yeah. Uh, this is a good idea. Uh, just like the Incredibles. Incredibles is probably the best all ages superhero property i've ever seen uh when i saw that movie i, I mean it, the cookies were right there on the bottom shelf every every kid could enjoy it but the, there was enough left in there for the adults to really yeah. really have a good time i uh i did a uh a, a, a like a party uh and i knew all kids were gonna there was gonna be kids there and their parents were gonna be there and uh, i played that video uh, that movie right and uh, 
And there's people who are like, oh man, you're playing a cartoon. Why are you playing a cartoon? And I was like, trust me, it 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 work. And then, and then the same people that were complaining to me were like, like into it halfway through. They're like, I was like, oh crap, we gotta go. I, what, what's the name of this movie? I need to, I need to see the good. I need to see the rest of it, you know. But uh, oh, yeah. But yeah, I mean, they they, they they got that balance too. right. They got that balance perfectly. Perfect. Yeah, I think. Uh could be it's not pick dreamworks i think they know what they're doing right uh, uh pixar it was pixar was it pixar yeah before disney was. before disney got them but it, it was DreamWorks pixar. did shrek and yeah. yeah uh and shrek is another one that was an example of they know what they were doing they were making yeah. that for adults uh disguised as a kid movie and right. i think it was great uh mm. or it did Brain's dying. Yeah, I cannot smell correctly. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, yeah, I cannot smell correctly after COVID. Yep, yeah, gotcha. Uh, and Kung Fu Panda. Yep, Kung Fu Panda was a good one. Was uh, yeah. also, it, it definitely walked that line. Uh, if you got a property that is all ages and, uh, and, you know, I, I think it's really important to make sure that that and take that you take the right stuff leave the right stuff out and leave the right stuff in and um and the thing that you should never worry about is uh thematically don't nerf the, your the, the themes in your in your 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 property don't nerf them yeah you know uh, because kids need things that are more complicated them thematically for to help them grow grow yeah. into this world which think. is a very complicated world so themes is uh don't worry about being too complicated with your themes uh just leave the smut out yeah leave yeah. the violence out leave the things that are really ephemeral and don't matter uh and uh, it's been too focused on these days and and just uh and leave it as thematically complicated as 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 it is just, just tell the story right because story matter, story is the most important thing. Yeah, you're time. You're essentially you're mm -hmm. telling uh, your same story. You're just taking off all the the fancy dressing that is there right. specifically to attract only you know an adult audience. You're just taking right. off the the sex um, yeah. and the sexy uh, and you know the gore and mm -hmm. you know stuff. You're taking off that stuff that you don't need. For right. your story that is really it is window dressing and and instead of profanity just put like uh x you know the, the curl curl the next thing you know, I mean, yeah garlic yeah um, yeah I garlic mean, or um or you can just make up uh yeah make up words that Act are profanity it. in their yeah. language like, make <laughs> up for, like your fake profanity so they still have a right. word that they're exclaiming right. like they're calling you something not nice or they're exclaiming <laughs> something not nice you could still have that right uh, right right I, I still i still tell people shiny all the time you know shiny <laughs> what do you mean by shiny that's like if you know you know <laughs> <laughs> or gorom i, I use gorom more, more than once it's like uh it's like did somebody just scratch my gorom car <laughs> <laughs> you know, for time yeah. to time, time to time. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's it's uh, it's all part of it. It's all part of uh, a kids can dream way better than adults can, you know. And so you don't have to, you don't have to like say, oh, this is this this plot's too complicated, or oh, this the world is too complicated. I I've got to like simplify this stuff. Don't simplify a darn thing. You don't treat don't. your readers like they're dumb. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Because they're not. They might they're be not. young, but they're not dumb. So do not treat your readers like they're dumb. Right, right. I remember toys I used to play with being really complicated. I mean, we used to we used to play these board games that were like, I didn't play shoots and ladders. We played like Monopoly, right, and things like that. Yeah, you know? and. uh I did you know you at least you played until somebody got upset and then flipped the board yeah i don't you know, know if that's, i've that's ever a... finished a game because <laughs> inevitably somebody's like i don't know the hotel ah! <laughs> yeah <laughs> always, always. 
<laughs> screw this game. I'll screw all of you. Uh, <laughs> you're cheating. Yeah, you're cheating. You're cheating. It's like it's like, hey man, you know. Uh, I'm sorry, I got a motel on boardwalk. What are you gonna do, right? Right. I'm anyway. sorry, this game just happens to mirror real life that well, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the bank always wins. <laughs> yeah. There you go. It, it, it always does. It always does. There's more truth in the first movie than the second. I think in Kung Fu Panda. Uh, don't kids want cool stuff three to five years ahead of their age group? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They yeah, kids are always feel like they're that. reading something edgy mm-hmm. with it doesn't have to actually be edgy. Right. Right. Um, it just has to be like, like I said, something your parents like on their own. <laughs> Earthquake, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then they can be like, oh, well, this is my, uh, my dad's comic. Uh, he was reading yeah. this, and now mm-hmm. I'm, I'm reading it too because I'm right. I'm a big kid. Okay. <laughs> um, I, I've, I've, the other guys know about this, but uh, my favorite comic of all time, the one that's influenced me the greatest. Uh, is the power pack? Uh, you, you know who the power pack is, right? From Marvel, the kids, the kids power group, huh? Yeah, well, there's a, there's a kid power pack, yeah, it's called the power pack. N- nothing later because they, they eventually got around to destroying them, too. But uh, early on, uh, there was a real, yeah, flips the game boy, <laughs> yeah, that's what happens, man. Uh, but there's this group of kids, uh, and they all like got these powers, and uh, and it's just this family. It was this little tight knit family, and uh, and they were like squabble like siblings, you know. They just uh, they were just like, and but uh, they got these incredible these incredible powers, and they did, they put them in the middle of the mutant massacre. Oh, and uh, and when I saw that, I was like, I saw that in the comic book store. I was like. Holy crap! How in the world are they going to do this? I mean, I because I, I've been following the mutant massacre, and I, I, I it was just horrific. It was just one of the worst, uh, you know, one of the hardest storylines to read. I mean, it's just really, but it is. Uh, uh, there's nothing good happening down in those tunnels, and uh, and I was like, how do you put these kids down here and keep them kids? You know, and I was intrigued by that. And not only did they keep them kids. But uh, they kept them safe, in a way. But they still put them in danger. But you, you never like, you never like felt uh, that that, you know, they they came out of it in ways that were like not. There was no no like intervention or anything that you were like, oh that that kid would have done that, you know, or you know everything that happened made sense. And then eventually, you know, uh, they were basically told, get out of these tunnels, you know. But they went down there to save their little friend, Leech. And uh, and so they, that's a, that's why they went down there, to save their friend. And then they had to tell their friend that they passed his mama uh, dead. And so the woman that was his mama, you know, that, that took care of him. Oh. And, uh, and they, didn't even, they didn't even shy away from that. Yeah. And it's just a master class in how to take people on a journey uh you and with kids and and keep the journey like keep keep it like never break the fourth wall you know or you ne- there's never a moment where i was like taken out of the story and uh there's this even a real great little subplot where they switch the their powers were, like scrambled uh right before the story and they're all like trying to figure out their new powers at, in the middle of all this trying out their new powers and uh, the younger brother and the older brother had this really cool, uh, like, dynamic where the older brother is always telling the younger brother that he's an idiot, you know, and always yeah. bullying things. And he got this power, and he was, like, just exploring his power, and he was just doing incredible things. Like, he punched this chick out, uh, that this name Arclight. She was, like, she was just brutal chick, right? And... Uh, and 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 she and he she tried to hit him and he he managed to dodge her, and she's like, "Hold still, you little brat," and he's like, "Okay, lady, you asked for it," and he like charged his his fist with all this gravity power and like punched her, like it was beautiful. The right the, the way they drew it was just beautiful, uh, but it was like a cheering moment. It's like right in the middle of all this, and his oldest brother was like just talking about to himself how good his younger brother was at this, you know, and how, how he sucked and his young brother was so much better than him, but he's never going to tell him. Right. 
and yeah. it's just like commentary your doubt doubt uh monologue and and it was just genius uh i i i looked at it uh i got like a digital version of it i need to get a physical version of it but i looked at a digital version of it like a month ago and i was just as inspired by it it holds up perfectly i just went, uh, I just went looking um yeah Power Pack managed to go completely under my radar, but mm -hmm. um, I didn't. It's worth a look. It's worth I a look. I didn't get to Marvel until mm -hmm. a lot later. Um, yeah. So yeah, they managed to go right under my uh, yeah. radar. Yeah, that's that's definitely. If you haven't seen it, you need to you need to get a few and look at them. Uh, that that probably right right down your right down your alley. <laughs> it's really good. <laughs> it's a really good series. Uh, I don't know who wrote the storyline. I know Chris Claremont was like over everything, uh, overarching everything. Uh, but uh, so if if he didn't write it, he was definitely uh, involved in it. Uh, one second, let me make sure I get this right. Uh, this won't take but a moment. You in Imperion, uh, the uh, the original mm -hmm. Teen Titans cartoon. Um, that they ended up making teen, turning into Teen Titans. Oh yeah, that's actually yeah. inspired the art for this. Um, oh wow! Yeah. Without that, being a direct uh, right. knockoff. <laughs> uh, yep. Jim Shooter was the editor. Uh, writer was Louis Samuelson. Louis Samuelson wrote it. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. <laughs> Yep, she she designed a lot of those characters that we know as X Men, uh, but she wrote it. She was uh she was like the secret uh, weapon of the X Men office, and <laughs> she's a lady. She was a lady, right? Heck yeah! But uh, it was the Power Pack. Uh, the, the they were uh, they're all called the Powers: Jack Power, Alex, uh, Julie, Katie, and Franklin. Richards was part of them at that point. Because it's uh the X Men had gone missing. Uh, I don't know what the, what was going on, but uh, but he was he was like part of them at that point. But uh, yeah, yeah, it's an incre uh, incredible series, incredible series. Uh, definitely look it up. Uh, Louis Samuelson, Seattle Punk. All right. Uh, started reading Spider Man when I was ten years old. I was going through a harsh period of abuse that literally saved my life, having the escape. We don't always realize the power of stories. No, we do not. That's awesome story. Thank you for sharing. Uh, it feels incredibly grown up to see stuff that obviously isn't cutified like Teen Titans Go. The first Teen Titans cartoon is really popular with kids. It was. I loved that cartoon. I watched And it was it heavy. It son. had some yeah. heavy themes in it. Yeah, it, it's one of those that didn't pull its punches. No, and no, it definitely did not. appealed to all ages because I loved mm -hmm. watching it. I watched it with my son. Well, the whole thing with Tara. Yeah, I mean, they, they didn't even they didn't flinch away from that. I mean, the whole thing with a her. A lot of the stuff with uh, Slade. <laughs> yeah, Slade, yeah, well, Slade was really deep. Right, right. Weasel, uh, Weasel. What? How do you know what that is? Weasel. Imperian Vole. I don't know who that is. All right, Weezy, Weezy. Oh, Weezy. Okay, okay. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Sorry. Uh, Power Pack was really cool. It was almost like a bit like Narnia at first outing the two brothers and the two sisters. Yeah. Yeah, it was really good. How long did it take to write and draw Riff Riders? Good question. I do like that none of them look related in the slightest, though. Like, no, <laughs> they look don't. like the Burger King Kids Club, but nobody's no, in don't. a wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, right, 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 right. Oh, uh, how long did it take? Um, mm -hmm. Well, let's see. Riff Riders, the first five pages mm -hmm. that kind of had its test run with different art and colors. Yeah. Um. That took me like maybe a weekend. If we don't wow. count the brainstorming with Luke, mm -hmm. and because a lot of that was just putting together the entire overarching thing, and right. Uh, right. me going, "All right, I'm gonna get to work on, uh, you know, at least the first five pages and figure out mm -hmm. how to leave it on a on a good spot to to leave it there." Um, yeah, yeah. That that took like a a weekend um, mm -hmm. after. Uh, I think this even after like sending it to Luke, going, you know, mm -hmm. you get to be the editor this time, you get the final approval because I'm the one that's, that's writing it and I won't edit my own. It would defeat the purpose if I was my right. own editor because like, I'm going to prove I love everything I write, I'm going to improve all of it. Like, <laughs> right, right, exactly. Um, 
but and then the rest of it um the rest of it took well clearly a lot longer it's a lot more pages but also mm -hmm. i had to figure out okay well you know this first five pages make a great teaser mm -hmm. uh where do i go from here where do i want the actual end of this book to be yeah how do i want it to be and then then i need to figure out how to get there um right. and so uh i'm actually still because we are funding mm -hmm. yeah uh i'm actually still going to go back uh, i got slowed <laughs> down by the, the coof but going to go right. back and right. uh after talking with Luke and edit uh, some more of the story mm -hmm. and try to rewrite it where it's pacing is a, a even better. Um, because since it's, you know, they've got a mystery to solve. Yeah. So there's, there was like some action. Then there was some sciencing. Mm -hmm. And then there's like some kind of clue hunting going on and so it feels kind of slow the pacing because it's not super actiony they're they're looking at stuff and, and things yeah. like uh i'm gonna go back and try to uh put a little more action in mm -hmm. there see if we yeah. can make the clue hunting a little more actiony uh right, right. <laughs> um uh so technically i am i'm still working on that uh drawing mm -hmm. rift riders uh, the turnaround when we went to Dillard was yeah. uh, pretty fast. Um, we had him do what, like, uh, we showed him the five pages, the five page mm. script, and was like, can you do like two of these pages? Pick whichever ones, but do like two of these pages so we can see the art style uh, that you're thinking mm -hmm. yeah. uh, before we do it. And we loved it. And uh, so he, he was pretty fast on that. Um, Right. The colors had 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 a decent back and forth, but Luke says, uh, "Luke's Luke's pretty confident that uh, as long as we, you know, if we get funded, the mm -hmm. book itself should be done and shipping yeah. in February. Yeah. So right. that's in a couple months. So I'm like, all right, well, you're the one that put that date on there, man. You're the fulfillment guy. Yeah, yeah. Don't freak me out. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm actually uh, going to while uh, while we're trying to fund. That gives right. me time to mess with the script up until yeah, it's we fund, and then oh, even if oh, we yeah. go right. even if we go in demand, mm -hmm. um, we're just we're given uh, delivered the rest of the stuff. Right, right, right. Uh, evidently, Wheezy is uh, Louise Simon. Louise Simonson. I didn't know that. Awesome. Uh, I like Louise. I like Wheezy's uh, writing very much. Uh, Squeaky puts her vote vote in for the first incarnation for Tween Teen Titans. She's eating dinner right here next to me. Right, that was good <laughs> stuff. That was a yeah, kids, kids was aimed cartoon that I enjoyed. Mm -hmm. That's what yeah. I'm hoping to get out of Rift Riders. Rift Riders isn't going to shy away from right. any themes that manage to come up. There's mm -hmm. going to be a lot of themes that are taking responsibility for the consequences of your own right. actions. Right. Um, because, you know, they're, they're going to find out um, mm -hmm. some stuff about each other even. And yeah. they're going to have to face uh, their, their past decisions and stuff. Well, that's the thing that I think is missing from children's fiction a lot today is that coming of age aspect. Uh, it's almost like they don't want kids to come of age. And one part of coming of age is when uh, you lose all the things that you, misconceptions you had about the world, see how it really works, and then like reassess yourself yeah. and find out who you really are, you know? And, and, uh, and so uh, one thing about boys in particular is that, this is a proven fact. I, I, I'm not like talking out my butt here, but <laughs> <laughs> girls kind of, a, uh, they mature uh, kind of like with their body, they mature, you know, and, but, but, but for boys, it's, uh, it's an achievement that they have to like achieve it. It's like, they have to like, uh, have to earn adulthood, you know? And so the, the right to be called a man, right? The right to be called yeah. a man. That's why so many cultures have that right of passage, that right of manhood. Uh, yes. And, and, and emotionally, boys have to be tested 
learn their limits and and break through those limits to become adults and and so when you see a lot of this fiction and it's obviously you know women who basically want to infantilize their kids or you know that write these things and you find that they're like the women are taking the uh, lead and women are like making all the decisions women are like you know or the the girls are like the ones that are like you just stay a boy and i'll take care of this right i was about to say we, we you hush now we decide when you get to be a man <laughs> <laughs> right we'll decide when you're gonna be a man right uh so so you know it, you see like this old fiction oh, the old model where yeah the girls had more maturity than the boys at the start but at the end of the you know the boys like achieve it and at the end of it the boy is like more more like the leader you know and uh you see this a lot in like earlier fictions uh it's stuff that from a few years ago that still holds up uh but you know this modern stuff where for the sake of feminism they've completely neutered the boys brought the girls yeah. up into being like the leaders and everything and uh and it's just backfired in the culture in a big way uh Hold on one second. We're getting at some talking over here. I, I must have hit a, hit a nerve. Hey, hey, guys, what's going on? Memes of destruction. <laughs> uh, the girls mature faster emotionally because most of their battles are psychic and one of the mind. Boys don't get the subtler nuances of that. Some men don't ever catch on to it. Right. Right. I agree with that. Uh, well, this is what event ruined Adventure Time. It got popular, and then you can actually see the point where Finn became useless and the shows were about getting saved by the princess. Yeah. Right, right. Men and boys, the battle tends to be physical. Right. So, yeah, actually, right. Uh, psychiatrists and psychologists mm -hmm. have figured this out. That, uh, yeah. yeah. Girls mature faster, kind of, socially. Right. Mm -hmm. um, because that's the skills that they are working on develop the most. So, you don't see girls living in their their base, parents' basement into adulthood. You rarely, if ever, see that. The true. reason why is because boys have to achieve coming up those stairs and going out into the world. And the ones that aren't allowed to do that, they'd be either infantilized by their mothers or ones that have retreated into the family home to stay away from that. Uh, they always... They always have like their little nest where they have all their safe stuff, and uh, and and they and they don't retreat out into the world. They don't like meet people. They don't uh, do anything. They play on games online and and troll people on social media, you know. And it's a whole entire generation that's 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 pretty much become that. And uh, and you know, and that's the reason why Jordan Peterson scares them so much, folks. Jordan Peterson's like. Make your bed, get out of the basement, go out into the sunlight. <laughs> Put down the controller, go out in the sunlight. Get I've... your shit together. together. See, yes. That's the cool yes. part that they that because I know they keep they they, they love using the, the play in the video games thing. And right, it's like right. think about how much easier it's gonna be playing video games in your own place where you don't mm -hmm. have your parents telling you to turn it down or interrupting you every five seconds, even though you you know you told them you can't pause because it's online. Like right. Play in video games in your own place where you can yeah. play them as much as you want. Nobody's gonna. This is so satisfying. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. Well, I have a 49 year old stepbrother who's still living in mama's basement. So I know this from experience. Uh, well, a lot of it is like, you know, the economy <laughs> itself is not a great one to no. just throw yourself out there well uh, the thing that got anywhere. him out of it the thing that got him out of the basement and out into society was usually going to college but yeah. because colleges have become this toxic no male zone uh where men have to like jump through hoops and be terrified that a girl is gonna mistake in the look that they gave them uh and yeah. because of the Title IX stuff that's just been abused uh so and much then the, it's the price of yeah yeah. college versus my dad was able to put himself through college with mm -hmm. a part-time job mowing lawns right right and i'm yeah. like i days can't even over. imagine if i could do that Those that'd be awesome i would over. have a master's right now and like so <laughs> many degrees. i'd have degrees in everything <laughs> right 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 uh let me see oh, geez louise uh we, we got behind over here all right uh 
Then she debuted Fiona and Cake, and that was a replacement for Finn and Jake. Oh, oh man. I didn't right. even know that. I uh, yeah. I thought it was cute in the beginning and dropped off pretty fast. Right, right. I forgot why I clicked the bell. Now I know. Thank you, man. Appreciate that. <laughs> uh, that was the end of the show. <laughs> right, right. Uh, Empyrean, Zero, Piper, and Luke. Yeah. All right. Um, here we go. Well, that young woman would want to. What young woman would want to live in a basement? Well, women don't have to live in a basement because there's always going to be a guy willing to pay their way. <laughs> let's let's face it. I mean, uh, is, is there anything wrong with that statement? No. Okay. All it's right. It's a lot easier uh, to get out of your family's house, I think, when you're a chick. Um, yeah. Right. It's just unfair like that. It's just titty titty privilege. I know when I hit. Again, when I hit 16, my mom was trying to throw. She was like, cool, get a job, get out. And I'm like, I'm 16, not 18, mom. Just, hold the hell on. Holy shit. Well, women tend, to, women, women tend to push daughters out of the house. Yeah, the, man. Well, they're like, get the fuck out. Yeah. <laughs> right. they, they keep the the boy. The sons can live there forever. The, the, right? the, they'll yeah, keep the, the sons. The and, they'll, yep. kick the, they'll kick the girls out in a heartbeat. That's, that's usually why. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, it's like, be... Uh, hey there, memes. All right. Uh, now Mrs. X memes lived in her mom's basement. Now, now Ms. X Mrs. Means lived in her mom's basement. Oh, okay. Is that why she's X? <laughs> anyway, in cells. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, there you go. Man, I worry about my basement dwelling son. He just turned 20. I feel bad for him as long as he's working and paying rent. I guess I can't complain. Yeah. As long yeah. as he's not stagnating mm -hmm. there. As long as he's, not, as long as he's growing. Yeah, yeah, he'll, yeah, yeah. It's okay. Uh, have you ever kissed a girl? Or have you ever even kissed a girl? It's William Shatner sketch at SNL. <laughs> <laughs> Imperial may have uh, been compared to Princess Bubblegum. Oh, okay. I'm not sure what that kind. Of, uh, I've heard. Oh, hold on. I've heard some kids uh, today not even wanting the driver's license. Yeah. Yep. Uh, that blows my mind. Me too. It's true. Yeah. I shoot my son's dad uh, mm -hmm. wanted me to get a driver's license and I was going to do all of the driving and he just didn't want one. I am so happy for how excited my son is to mm -hmm. he turns 18 right. uh, next year. And he is so hyped that he's yeah. going nuts going, mom, will you take me to the bank so I can get my own account yet? Will you help me get my own ID right now? Can you help me get a learner's permit? Like hurry the hell up. And I'm like, yeah. all right, all right, slow down. You're still 17 and this stuff costs money. Slow <laughs> right, it down right, a little. Right, right. Slow your um, roll. I, I like time, where you're I'm headed. Like, I'm so I like where you're happy. Headed. Like, I'm so happy to hear it because, you know, that right. means that he he wants to be ready. And right. so that feels good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, as long as you empower him to uh, make those choices, make those decisions, and uh, and uh, take that initiative, you know. Uh I mean, that's that's really valuable uh, just to do that. And one part, the way you do that, uh, especially young men, is you give them the right books and the right stories to read that yeah. that how allows them to uh, have that ambition, you know, and to, to feel that, to, you know, that heroism, that's innate heroism that's within them, you know. And uh, and that's why you got to leave it in your children's fiction, your kids, your kids fiction. I mean. Uh, do not so. yeah do not baby do not baby mm -hmm. uh well baby your babies but do not baby yeah. your kids uh, right. again though if you are specifically like i am writing this just for kids uh, i mm -hmm. don't care if the parents enjoy it or not because you know this right. is just for kids um generally stuff like that is for like almost preschool age like kindergarten yeah. age first grade um right. Right. that kind of stuff yeah and again, yeah. that's that's when you need to make sure you understand the purpose of your book before mm -hmm. you write it. Right. Um, and is this an educational book? Is this going to be like I'm making up a little fairy tale, but it's going to have like a moral of the story? Right, right. Um, you need to know that before you start, because yeah. if your book is directionless, then as mm -hmm. they learn how to read, yeah, they're going to get so done with your book real quick. Right. Because it's going to be like Teletubbies. There's no direction. It's just a bunch of bright colors and yeah. sounds at you but written well form. <laughs> uh, let's just say uh harry potter is a good example of this okay is harry he wants he starts out being this despised kid stuck in uh the cupboard 
uh, who's unwanted, you know, that nobody wanted him. And uh, he's told he's not special most of the days of his life. He's basically servitude uh, to his cousin. And then he gets told, you're a wizard. You're exceptional. You're special. Goes to the wizarding world, finds out that he's a rock star. Yeah. You know? And But then that plays with his head, but then he eventually kind of like resolves the two, the kid in the cupboard and the rock star, and becomes Harry Potter. And it all happens in the first book. But they didn't shy away from death. They didn't shy away from, from danger. They didn't shy away from him acting like a brat and to making Hermione cry. They didn't shy, he, she didn't shy away from any of that. And what you get is a book that changed the generation. And that's it, right yeah, up there Radcliffe, with Lord they, of the uh, they, they picked a good actor for that. Um, yeah, Danny Harry Radcliffe. Potter, what's really yeah. neat is if you manage to grow up as Harry Potter was being written and released, the yeah. books grew with you. Yeah, they um, did. So, like, you know, if you started writing around eight years old, by the time the next one came out, mm -hmm. you had grown with the characters. Right. Uh, so you were still in their age group going through your own personal growing pains of uh -huh. similar school life BS. Yeah. Uh, Percy Jackson books are really good, too. Uh, yeah. Uh, that's something else. Like, my son... Uh, had Harry Potter and the, the Percy Jackson books. He loved those. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, I of course I, I, I identified with it because uh, I was uh, living with an aunt and uncle who didn't want me, and I was an orphan kid. So <laughs> I picked it up. I was like, oh, I'm I'm Harry Potter, you know. <laughs> I just need to find I just need to find that uh, that platform and get can get into Hogwarts, you know. So. That, it that, took, uh, that, it that took saved my life. The book series saved my life. It really did. It took the movies for me. Yeah. Uh, when I was a kid, my dad gifted me the first two Harry Potter books. Mm -hmm. um, he's always giving us books. That's right. like his go-to. So I was like, and I'm looking at the, the drawing on the cover, not going to lie. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking, and I'm like, oh, this is dorky as hell. This is for yeah. dorks. I'm not a dork. I'm cool. I'm too <laughs> cute for this. Right. Uh, this is a little right. kid book. Nah. Um, yeah. And then uh, my, uh, I made a, shoot. Mm -hmm. uh, I think they made the first announcement that there was going to be right. a Harry Potter book. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wait. The movie? This is, yeah, I mean, yeah, the movie. Yeah, and movie. I was mm -hmm. like, oh, wait, for real? This mm -hmm. isn't some, because I just thought my dad just found this and thought, <laughs> oh, yeah, this was dorky. Let's, uh... Right. And uh, I was like, oh, is this? Was book popular and my best friend at the time she was like yeah yes, i have like all these so at first here's what i did um <laughs> oh actually i think she talked about like in the books i gave her mm -hmm. my copies of the first two because she didn't ah. have them oh um, and i guess the third was coming out mm -hmm. or something and so i was still uninterested but it was like hmm, my friends heard of this right okay right. well you can have it uh mm -hmm. And but I do think it was around the time the movie came out that she was basically like, "Want me to lend you those books you gave me so that mm -hmm. you can re actually <laughs> read them?" Right. She's right. like, "You're missing out." She got me into reading. Like she was a bookworm and I wasn't. Right. And right. she turned me into one. So she got me to read my own Harry Potter books. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "You can't oh, have a back. Is, you can't have like, a back." I'm like, "This is baby stuff." No, I still gave them back. Fair, oh, fair, fair okay. square. Uh, but right, I ended up right, buying right. the collection later. Yeah. And then my son took that. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. But, uh, awesome. It got to the point where I caught up and me and her were both waiting for like the second to last book. Yeah. Uh, together, like all right. hyped. <laughs> right, 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 right. When it came out. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, let me see. Um, Harry Potter's originally targeted eight year old boys. Great example. We target the, the target changed as he wrote new volumes. Yep. Daniel Radcliffe, the greatest actor of our times. <laughs> right. Uh, those Percy Jackson books, same deal. Yeah, yeah. Percy Jackson books were real good. Uh, excellent speech, Bunny. Well, I appreciate it. You're a wizard, Bunny. <laughs> oh well. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. Uh, let's see. I went out and bought all those books because all the people in the Boise area wanted them banned from the library because of alleged Satanism. I had to get oh, them goodness. read them to see for myself. I, that's the reason I read them. That's the reason I read them. I was I was rebelling by reading them. But once I read them, I was like, "Satanic kids' books, right, and, right, yeah." I, but yeah, I, they didn't shy away from anything. Uh, they just didn't no. put in 
the stuff that was unnecessary. No, no, they didn't. They didn't. Uh, I actually discovered the Harry Potter books when I was in the army. They were getting uh, passed around the barracks at Fort Meade. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Rowling was super clever, combining all the old fairy tales and missing their own unique spin on them. Great books. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Uh, all these books, your niece, or will you branch out? That's a question for you. Oh, um, I definitely am going to, to branch out. Um, mm-hmm. There's one uh, storyline I want to do next, and it's for my VTuber. Because ah. I think it would be neat if a virtual like uh, anime girl sold her own book, like went around and promoted oh. her own book. Uh, so fun. it's going to be her lore, basically, mm-hmm. in the storm of it. And it's going to be closer to, to manga, that one. Oh, okay. um, in feel, in style, and this and that. That one will probably be able to be all ages. But Mm -hmm. there's another sci-fi I want to do that I've been sitting on a long time. And it touches stuff that's not going to be all. I don't think I'd be able to uh, advertise it Mm -hmm. as all ages if I touch on some of the stuff that it's going to have. So uh, it -hmm. would definitely, definitely depend on the parent. But I would probably say like teen and up, which Mm -hmm. is Peregrine. Peregrine's teen and up. Right. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Uh, all right. Uh, you're lucky, though. My mom banned me from Harry Potter because she thought they worshipped Satan or worshipped the devil. Gilla Malkenberg and Tom Sawyer were okay, though. <laughs> yeah, Tom Sawyer is definitely a, a real good you know, example that you should follow, right? As a kid. Yeah, there you go. A little con artist, right? right. Uh, Aaron Jordan, go buy the series and read them. Yeah. Yeah, I would, those are ones yeah, that I'd feel so. like, look, I'd suggest it to adults. If you're into mm-hmm. like at least anything like fantasy, yeah, D and D, like I would still go go. Read well, them. I will. I will say this: she's not a good writer, but she's an incredible storyteller. I, I, I always tell that uh, to people because technically she's not that good of a writer, but she's an incredible storyteller and the world builder. She's an amazing world yeah. builder, and uh, and. And when you, uh, you know, because you're going to run into a lot of adverbs and things like that that are, like, not very good writing. But she just, these characters are vivid. They vi- they're vibrant. The dialogue is there. And she just builds these, wor- built that world just beautifully. Beautifully. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway, oh, I know the story and everything. I just saw caught up. All right. <laughs> All right. Anyway, uh, thank you for coming on, Piper. It's kind of last minute, but I just wanted to, to t- cover this topic. Uh, tomorrow night, uh, the Love Stream is actually moving to Saturday nights. We're going to do a soft reboot uh, of the Love Stream. Uh, it's going to be on a 7 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Uh, and, uh, and we're going to basically why i love the genesis crew i'm going to go through every each membership uh what the projects are involved in and uh, i've got a trivia i'm working on uh for people that are in the genesis crew to uh, uh see how well they know their fellow crewmates so <laughs> you're a zip for that trapper if, you know should should you uh should you show up uh <laughs> <laughs> having just come through the door, but you might know some of them since you, you're involved so heavily with it. Uh, <laughs> but uh, Aaron's like, he's going to make it weird. Of course I'm going to make it weird. I always make it weird. That's, that's my, that's my, that's what I do anyway. Uh, so that's, that's on for tomorrow night. Uh, thank you, Piper. Uh, Riff Riders, the uh, link, I posted it just earlier. Uh, just go up, scroll up. You'll find it. The second link, not the first one. The second, first one don't work, uh, but second link. And uh, <laughs> check this, check it out. Uh, it looks great. Um, and back it if you haven't. Uh, I highly suggest it. Anyway, uh, if you haven't, like and subscribe to this channel, Telepathic Bunny Comics. The link to that channel, if you're in a different, uh, we're simulcasting. So if you're in a different uh, chat, you'll need to click on that to get to Telepathic Bunny Comics. It's pinned at the top. Uh, and uh, just go ahead once you get there to like and subscribe if you like this content. Uh, we plan, we uh, we follow, we we are writer centric, story centric, and we talk about all these subjects and about how to improve and uh, how to escape uh, the bad writing of today. 
And uh, the, if you like that topic, uh, then this is the channel for you. Anyway, uh, so that has been Cooper uh, from Telepathic Bunny Comics. This has been Miss Piper Steed, Piper's Adventure. Uh, check her out on her links below in the description. And uh, that's all we got for the night. Y'all have a good evening. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Tell me what's on your mind.